Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India I am going to define the quantity called the QIJ and later this is going to form a matrix that is going to be call it as a infinite decimal generator matrix. So, let me start with the definition QIJ that is nothing but take a derivative of PIJ of T that is a function of T you can find out the derivative it is a der it is differentiable function only. So, you take a derivative then substitute T equal to 0 for all i not equal to j then you define q i i that is also in the same way separately because the q i i the diagonal element is going to be different from all other elements therefore, I am defining separately. You know how to find out the derivative derivative of uh, p i j of t with respect to t that is nothing but the limited delta t tends to 0 the difference divided by the delta t. Since p i j of t is the transition probability of system moving from i to j you can use p i j of 0 is equal to 0 for i is not equal to j for j is equal to i that is p i of 0 that is equal to 1 that means what is the transition probability of system moving from the state i to i in the interval 0 that is same as 1 that probability is 1. So, use this in the previous limit in this p a j of 0 is equal to 0 and p a j of 0 is equal to 1 you substitute then the limit delta t tends to 0 therefore, the p a j of delta t this will go to this side. So, q i j times delta t therefore, this is going to be p a j of delta t is nothing but the q a j multiplied by delta t plus small o order of delta t that means, uh, as delta t tends to 0 this uh, whole quantity will tends to 0. Similarly, you substitute p i a of 0 is equal to 1 here therefore, p i a of delta t that is same as uh, this will come to this side. So, 1 plus q i a delta t plus order of delta t. So, this order of delta t that is also tends to 0 as a delta t tends to 0. You know that the summation of p i j even at the time point delta t the small negligible time point delta t at the time also over the i that is equal to 1. Therefore, if you sum it up you can conclude the left hand side is the probability right hand side for i is not equal to j you have q i j whereas, uh, the second expression you have 1 plus q i i. Therefore, using the property of summation of p i j is equal to 1 you will get uh, the summation of q i j for all i sorry for all j that is going to be 0. When you add uh, both the equations uh, for all j you will get uh, the summation over j q i j is equal to 0 as well as all the q i j quantities are going to be great or equal to 0 from the first one because the left hand side is a probability and uh, this is multiplied by the delta t uh, delta t is always greater than 0. Therefore, the q i j is going to be greater than 0 for all i not equal to j whereas, if I add over all the j that is going to be 0. Therefore, you will get the q i i that is nothing but you make the summation for all q i j for or for all j except i then you make a sum minus sign. So, that is going to be the q i i that means, the diagonal element is nothing but you make the row sum except that uh, the diagonal term and put the minus sign that is going to be the diagonal term. Therefore, when you make a row sum that is going to be 0. The details of the proof can be found in the reference books. So, the quantity q i j that has the property the rho sum is going to be 0 and uh, other than the diagonal elements are greater than or equal to 0. Therefore, the diagonal element is going to be summation of uh, all the other terms with the minus sign. So, using this we can make a matrix uh, that is going to be q 
matrix with the entities uh, q i j such that satisfies the property q i j is always greater than or equal to 0 for i is not equal to j whereas the diagonal element is minus of summation therefore it has the property the row sum is going to be 0. So, the difference between uh, this matrix and the one step transition probability matrix in the DTMC that is a probability matrix. So, the entries are probability values from 0 to 1 and the summation row sum is 1 whereas here because q i j s are obtained by differentiating the p i j s these are all the rates and these rates are always greater than or equal to 0 other than the diagonal elements and the diagonal elements are uh, minus with the summation of all other row elements. So, this matrix is called a infinite decimal generator matrix some books they use the word rate matrix also and whereas uh, here the rates are uh, placed in the other than the diagonal elements and the sum of the rates could be 0 that means uh, the probability of a system moving from that particular state to the that particular state is not possible that probability is 0 or uh, there is a uh, in a small interval of time there is a uh, the transition is not possible. So, whenever the rates are uh, greater than 0 that means uh, there is a positive probability that the system can uh, have a transition of system moving from i to j. So, we have uh, defined uh, the q matrix now using the q matrix we are going to find out uh, the p i j of t. So, let me start with the Chapman Kolmogorov equation now I am going to differentiate with respect to capital T that means uh, I make the interval 0 to small t plus capital T as a 0 to t then I make a t to t plus capital T differentiate with respect to capital T therefore, the left hand side is going to be a, I have written with a dash. So, the derivative comes inside the p k j of t then I am substituting t equal to 0. So, basically I am making a system to move from state 0 to small t then there is a small interval of time from t to t plus capital T that is the meaning interpretation of this then substituting t equal to 0 I will get uh, the left hand side is going to be p i j of dash t that is same as the summation over this whereas, this is nothing but the way we have defined the infinitesimal generator matrix uh, entities. So, this is nothing but the q k g that is the rate in which the system is moving from the state k to j. In a matrix form, I can make it as a p i j of t is going to form a matrix. So, the p dash of t that is same as a p of t times q. So, this is the matrix and the p of t is also matrix and this is the p dash of t means each entities are differentiated with respect to time t. So, this is in the matrix form and this equation is called a forward Kolmogorov differential equation because the derivation goes from 0 to t then t to t plus t we are considering as a very small interval of time. Therefore, this equation is called a forward Kolmogorov differential equation. The same way if you do 0 to small t that has a small interval of time and t to t plus capital T then I will get the p dash of t is equal to q times p of t that is called the backward Kolmogorov differential equation. Whether you frame a forward equation or a backward Kolmogorov equation if you solve that equation you will get the p i j of t. If you solve p dash of t is equal to p of t into q that is a forward equation p dash of t is equal to q times p of t that is a backward equation. If you solve the equation with the initial condition because uh, it is a differential equation. So, you need a initial condition what is the probability what is the transition probability of system moving from i to j at time 0. If you know the initial condition by supplying that solving this equation you will get the p a j of t once you know the p a j of t then you can get the 
distribution of x of t. So, once uh, you know the p a j of t, the given is pi a of 0 and uh, by solving that uh, forward or backward Kolmogorov differential equation, you will get the pi j of p i j of t using the these two you can get the pi j of t. So, for a given uh, pi, pi i of 0 and p i j of t that means, the transition probability and the initial state probability vector one can find out the distribution of x of t. So, in this lecture I have started with the Marco process then I have discussed uh, the definition of a continuous term Marco chain and also I have given what is the distribution of time spending in any state before moving into any other state and also I explained the infinite decimal generator matrix and using that uh, how to find out the transition probability of p i j t from the Chapman Kolmogorov equation and we got a forward as well as the backward Kolmogorov differential equations. By solving a forward or backward Kolmogorov differential equation one can get the pi j of sorry one can get the p i j of t that is a transition probability. Using this equation you can get the pi j of t that is nothing but the distribution of x of t. With this uh, let me stop the this lecture and the next lecture I will go for a simple example of a continuous time Marco chain as well as a, the stationary limiting distribution and the steady state distribution in the next lecture. Mm -hmm.